Howdy Hacksters, I'm Alex Glow, and today for Throwback Thursday we have a special treat. It's a Java ring. This little guy is 19 years old and is one of the first wearable tech two-factor authentication devices. Let's take a look inside. This thing is made of stainless steel. Uh, it's totally insane, and it's got this I button embedded in it, uh, along with a Java virtual machine and a lithium battery that's valid for 10 years. Um, However, this thing is now 19 years old. Uh, weirdly enough, a lot of the uh, articles about it came out on April 1st, 1998. Uh, but it's not a, you know, an April Fool's prank or anything. It is a real thing that you can get on eBay. Uh, so, yeah, this thing has about four different types of security on it. It's got 10 and 24-bit RSA public key encryption, which is similar to PGP keys. So if you've got a PGP key that you've had signed, um, you know, it's the same sort of technology that you can use to sign devices and things like that, uh, and other applications that we'll cover in a bit. Uh, it's got some RAM embedded, a couple different types, and also it's tamper-proof. So the RAM, uh, especially the NVRAM, the non-volatile random access memory, is um, rigged so that if someone tries to tamper with it physically, uh, it undergoes a process called rapid zeroization that uh, erases everything, uh, which is pretty cool. And then it also has a random number generator and a real-time clock so that it can provide sort of true uh, unpredictable encryption, which helps with man-in-the-middle attacks and uh, disallows, for example, uh, backdating transactions so that people can't mess with its clock. Besides that, also the processor clock varies its speed between 10 and 20 megahertz. Megahertz? Yeah. <laughs> I've got a cheat sheet here. And uh, that means that it is even harder for people to snoop your data and use it again at a different point. Um, it's essentially similar to today's uh, you know, two-factor authentication and one-time passes. So if you've used a YubiKey, uh, for example, or if you have two-factor authentication on your Google account or Amazon so that uh, you have something that you have like a token or your phone, and something that you know, like your password or a PIN. Uh, in this case, you can also add a PIN so that you have the signet ring uh, and you know your PIN. Uh, and these things together allow you to have pretty tight security. Um, let's have a look at this thing. There's some cool websites around that show pictures of the whole thing broken down, and we'll get to those in just a second. Uh, but I wanted to show you the whole beautiful thing. It says Sun Microsystems around the edge here. Uh, and, the, you know, the stamping quality is not the best. It's not super gorgeous, but it's not meant to be. It's meant to be indestructible. They made this thing out of stainless steel. It's tested for 10 years. Like the battery, the outside is tested for 10 years of use and I think a million hot contacts. Um, the way that you use this guy is you connect it to a thing called the blue dot which does uh, serial communication with it over the one wire protocol. So you might notice that this looks kind of like, uh, this is the I button up here, and it looks kind of like a coin cell battery. And that's for a good reason, because um, you know here you have positive contact and ground on the coin cell battery, right? Uh, this thing has the ground being the outer casing, uh, and then the hot contact for one wire data communication is on the top. Uh, I'm getting fingerprints all over it, but that's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, it's got this adapter called the Blue Dot, which it works with USB serial or parallel ports on your Windows NT computer, <laughs> uh, which is just, you know, crazy awesome throwback time. So let's take a look at the pamphlet thing that comes with this, because it's got this whole user manual with this wonderful, grandiose language that I want to share with you. Come on, go back in there. There's your Java ring. This one's made way too big for me. It's like size 10 and a half or something, and it's uh, it doesn't even stay on my thumb. Uh, here we go. A hardware token of appreciation for those who write Java. Get it? Token of appreciation? Two-factor authentication token? Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> Experience the power firsthand with this special edition Java ring. Um... Yeah, it talks about the blue dot here, which you can see uh, there are these little adapters that you can uh, attach to your computer, as I mentioned, it can hold up to two at a time. Uh, this little guy has this ridged 
thing on here, which means that you can actually connect it, leave it connected if you want a more sort of semi-permanent connection. Um, let's see, protect your identity, identity, etc., etc. What's where's the cool stuff? Your password to the net network economy. This is crazy. Uh, this is you know 1998, so the internet is still fairly new. Uh, and people are talking about things like the information superhighway and stuff like that. Uh, and, you know, I'm really actually a little bit disappointed every time I hear someone use the word cyber, like cybersecurity um, and cyber criminals. Uh, actually, I lied. I'm not disappointed. I'm excited. I love that word. <laughs> but they've definitely got uh, some of that going on here this sort of antiquated internet language. And as you can see, they embedded this thing in keys and key f or uh, watches and key fobs and wallets and whatever this thing is. <laughs> um, yeah, they challenge you to try and destroy it. Uh, there's a whole other side. Um, yeah, they talk about the different kinds of cryptography and they also, uh, well, they have this really cool thing of like, the Java ring, wear it with the pride of a digital citizen in a new world order. All this like early hype about the internet is so exciting. You could also use it actually to create stateful uh, connections if you were on a new computer or whatever. You know, you could sign in with your token and it would like pull all your information so you'd have a custom session. Uh, just like signing into a computer with your fingerprint or whatever. Um, some cool like applications that they list here. Opening a locked door, logging into a computer, coin purse. I'm not sure what that means. Maybe, uh, I mean, this is, you know, decades before Bitcoin. Uh, but, I mean, a coin purse is obvious, but why would you use... Okay, medical information, yes. Uh, internet transactions for, you know, validation, authentication. Um, one button shopping experience coming to new, soon to a store near you. Isn't that cool? Citizen credential, driver's license, passport, etc. to prevent fraud. Um, you know, some of these things actually did come about. Uh, and we're going to have a look at some of those now. Isn't this thing crazy? You've got the little sun uh, logo on the side as well. The one wire system is a Dallas microcontrollers thing. Um, but yeah, this was, this was pretty cool. All right, so an introduction to the Java ring published by Stephen M. Curry on uh, April 1st, 1998 in Java World. Um, this is a pretty cool article. You can learn all kinds of stuff about it. Uh, we covered most of this already, but if you want to really get into the nitty gritty of the technology underlying this thing, then you can look it up. Um, it's got some historical background and stuff. What I wanted to show you was their list of uses so, um, since their introduction, iButton memory devices have been deployed in vast quantities as rugged, portable data carriers, often in harsh environmental conditions. So this was a big thing that they tout here is that it's more um, stable and durable than a card. This is the big uh, duality that they're setting up is, do you want this like fragile card that you're going to lose and break and stuff, or do you want this thing? Uh, and you can put it on your keychain, which you've already learned through your whole life not to lose it, and stuff like that. Um, so among the large-scale uses are tr as trans <laughs> transit fare carriers in Istanbul, Turkey, as uh, maintenance record carriers on the side of rider trucks, and as mailbox identifiers inside the mail compartments of the U.S. Postal Service's outdoor mailboxes. They are worn as earrings by cows in Canada to hold vaccination records, and they are used by agricultural workers in many areas as rugged substitutes for time cards. Um, and in the Wikipedia article for OneWire, they actually show one of these cool fare cards um, a smart ticket, one of the Istanbul ones. Uh, you can kind of get a pretty good look at this thing. But yeah, uh, they wanted to have them in all kinds of different form factors. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's the Wikipedia page for OneWire, which is, again, the technology that they use here. So the top part of it uh, is the hot contact, and then the shell is the ground. Oh, and they got a picture of the Java ring, too. <laughs> um, a little disappointingly, although it's called the I button, there isn't any actual active part of this. Part of its durability is that it's completely uh, one piece. Like, I mean, it's not manufactured as one piece. It's like this little steel can that has two outer pieces uh, connected with waterproof grommets and stuff like that. Uh, but it is designed to not be... Um, 
actuated physically. It's all done with the electrical contact. And let's see. What else we got here? We've got, what is an iButton device? This is a cool article from the Maxim Integrated site. Uh, and it gives a bunch of other cool little images of what's going on with this thing. Uh, you can see this teeny tiny little thumbnail of the chip inside its can and lid, uh, along with that lithium battery that helps keep stuff running. Um, and uh, there's other diagrams out there that you can find with the whole thing exploded, including the quartz crystal and the battery and the, uh, you know, anti-electrostatic discharge pieces and whatnot. Uh, because obviously this is designed to be worn on your finger, so it better be resistant to ESD. So, yeah. And then finally there's an FAQ if you really want to dig down into how people use these, especially their pain points. Uh, it's kind of fun to look at, you know, back in the day, uh, what kinds of problems that they had with Windows 95, you know. Uh, so yeah. Thanks for watching this Throwback Thursday. If you're interested, as I said, you can get one of these guys uh, on eBay. I don't remember exactly how much it was. Maybe $25. Uh, I got this a while ago and then discovered that it totally didn't fit me. But uh, I'm not going to be using it anyway because it's been 19 years and the battery is certainly dead. Even if the thing is um, still in otherwise good condition, it is not guaranteed by the seller to work. So that's the Java Ring from Sun Microsystems, Dallas Semiconductor, Maximum Integrated, etc. Uh, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this insight. Happy Throwback Thursday!